I uh, figured now would be a good time to make another World Series video because it could be over tomorrow, so here it is. Um, obviously this is just analysis because I'm not really rooting for anybody here. Um, so far, you know, in Game 1 we saw Cliff Lee just play the cool customer who went in there and owned the Yankees. I've never seen a pitcher take over a game like that, or at least I haven't seen it like that in a long time. He was just dominant in that first game, and the Phillies gave him a little run support and piled it on a little bit at the end, and that was all he needed, so obviously that was great, but the Phillies really haven't gotten what they needed out of their pitchers since then, and it's disappointing because that's really one of the strengths of their team with all the quality players they have in their rotation. They really didn't get what they needed out of them. I mean, uh, game two, Pedro played, pitched pretty well. I was okay with Pedro. A.J. Burnett just pitched the game of his life, and sometimes it's what happens. A.J. Burnett destroyed the Phillies almost as bad as uh, Cliff Lee did to the Yankees in game one, and sometimes it happens. I'm, I'm sure A.J. Burnett's probably not going to pitch a very good game tomorrow because that's in his nature. Now, as for Game 3, um, I, I don't know. I mean, Cole Hamels really has not been good this postseason. I don't know what's up with him, but he gave up on average, I think, one run per inning. He pitched, and he really got lit up out there, and he got run support, got early runs. He got a couple late runs, but um, he really got pushed around out there. And I think some of the people who came in from the bullpen gave up some runs as well. But um, in this game... And really, tonight's game, I, that being Game 3 and Game 4, it really felt like the Yankees were just overwhelming the Phillies with their lineup talent. I mean, they're, they have a really deep lineup that has so many threats in it. You know, you start at the top, you got Jeter and Damon and Rodriguez and Tashira and Matsui, uh, Pos Posada. I mean, their weak links would be oh, decent on pretty much any other team. I mean... I don't like think Nick Swisher is a very good hitter, but he's a lot better than some of the other weak links around the league. Um, you know, Cabrera or Cano, those guys, not exactly the best hitters in the world, but as far as lineups go, when those are your main concerns, you're doing really well for yourself. So, um, they just seem to kind of overwhelm Philadelphia. Like, you know, the Phillies were throwing their elite pitching at the Yankees elite hitting and the Yankees elite hitting was overwhelming them and couldn't quite overcome and uh, tonight I really liked what I saw from Joe Blanton for most of the night but um, he did give up four runs can't do that but he was um, throwing some nasty heat tonight looked pretty well for the most part pretty good that is uh, I, I can't say this loss is on him but um, you would like to see a little bit better than that uh, I did kind of feel like tonight was a luxury game for the Phillies because they had their fourth best pitcher against the Yankees best, and if they could pull it out that would be something else, but when you're looking at it now you realize, no, they kind of needed to win this game, and um, well, they didn't get it, so I don't know, I mean, Sabathia played pretty well, I mean, he gave up three runs in six and a half innings, that's not stellar, but... He pitched all right. He he did give up some stuff here and there to the Phillies, and then you know Joba came in, gave up the home run. Otherwise, he pitched great though. And you know Brad Lidge, you you kind of had the bad feeling that he was going to come back and bite the Phillies when it um, would have hurt the most, and he did tonight because he really blew it in the um, ninth inning, trying to just get the give the Phillies the opportunity to win, and he really laid an egg and. Uh, I hate to say it, but I kind of felt it coming. I I mean, when Pedro Feliz hit the home run off Joba to tie it up, I, I kind of had a good feeling about that. I felt like, oh man, he he might do this. I kind of feel good about this. And then Brad Lidge went out there, and I was like, uh-oh. You know, you just know with those guys, because he's always, he's been struggling for quite a while now, so you know how it is. But once again, it seemed like the Yankees kind of overwhelmed the Phillies with their overall lineup talent, and they're in a bind. They're down 3-1. to one. Now, tomorrow, um, I'm really confident that the Phillies win tomorrow. Cliff Lee going up against uh, A.J. Burnett. 
I don't think Burnett's going to play pitch very well tomorrow. It's in his nature to be inconsistent. And I think the Phillies can get some run support, and that should be more than enough for the um, Phillies to win because Cliff Lee, dude, is a monster. And if he gives up a little bit tomorrow, that would be probably disappointing to him. He's going out there looking to shut him out, and, you know, they really need him to um, just be lights out out there t um, tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, not tonight. Well, by the time you guys see this video, it might be tonight, but tomorrow night for me. So, I'm sure they'll win tomorrow. If they don't, that's kind of sad, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, and then Game 6, I if there is a Game 6, I'm going to make a video to talk about it then, because I don't know who's going to start for the Phillies, Pedro or Hamels. But if we get there, I'll talk about it then, and see ya.